Hello everyone, welcome to our presentation. Uh, my name is Jovana Micic and today together with Natalie Steinhauer, we will present you our work. Our paper is called Quick Water Fairness and it is done together with Christian Kashan and Luca Zanolini. And we are from Cryptology and Data Security Research Group from University of Bern. So here is the outline of today's presentation. First, we are going to talk about the problem of fair ordering of transactions. Then we will show properties of strong Byzantine consensus and delta differential consensus. And finally, show our main contribution. Uh, that's the uh, differential order fairness protocol and its implementation called quick order fair atomic broadcast. First, we discuss some background and problems of a fair order of transactions. In both permissionless and permission blockchains, miners or leaders have the power to select and order messages that go into the ledger. Consequently, malicious miners or Byzantine leaders may select and order transactions in such a way that they can extract value from the network. Furthermore, since transactions are public, also selfish users can exploit knowledge from the network to place their own transactions in a fraudulent way. In this example, we see two users that place transactions T1 and T2 into the mempool, where they wait to be included into a block by a miner. By paying more gas for transaction T2, illustrated with the $3 signs, transaction T2 will be executed faster, and therefore the miner has to place it before transaction T1 in the outputted block. Now consider a malicious user who can see the transactions placed into the mempool. Let's assume that transaction T2 offers an opportunity for the attacker to extract value by placing an own transaction T3 before transaction T2 and another transaction T4 after T2. Again, the order of transactions can be impacted by paying gas and hence T3 can be placed before T2 by paying more gas and T4 after T2 by paying less. Such front-running attacks or sandwich attacks result in a price manipulation of the market and are a serious threat for financial systems. In decentralized finance, this has to be prevented technically. So far, traditional atomic broadcast protocols guarantee a total order, which means that all correct parties obtain the same sequence of messages and that any message submitted to the network by a client is delivered in a reasonable lapse of time. However, this property does not constrain which order is chosen before producing the output sequence and doesn't prevent malicious parties from manipulating the order or inserting their own transactions. So how can we obtain this? And how would we define a fair order? Intuitively, we would consider it fair that a message received by many parties before another message, it will be delivered before the other message. Let's have a look on this example with seven parties where two of them, party six and seven, are malicious. Every party has a local view of the input order of messages. For instance, party two has received message M1 before message M2. The malicious parties are now trying to insert messages M3 and M4 in a fraudulent way and broadcast them to the network. The honest parties will eventually have these messages also in their input order, but after the other messages, since they were produced and broadcast later. To achieve a fair or output order, among these messages, we count the number of times a message appears before another message in the local input order of all parties. For instance, M1 appears five times out of seven before M2. That means M2 appears only twice before M1. But M2 appears five times before M3. 
and again M3 appears only twice before M2. M3 appears six times before M4 and only once the other way around. By counting all these majorities, we obtain a fair output order and the attempt to place M3 before M2 by the malicious parties has been prevented. This is great, but it has been shown that such preference votes can lead to cycles. This situation is described um, in social choice theory and known as the Condorcet paradox. This example demonstrates three honest processes with different local input orders. If you count again how many times M1 appears before M2, there is a majority of two out of three, namely process one and three. M2 appears, appears before M3 also for two of the processes, process two and three. But M3 appears also twice before M1 for process one and two. Hence, this order according preference votes leads to a cycle and leaves the decision for a fair order impossible. A solution to this problem has been formulated in 2020 by Kelkar, Sang, Goldfeder and Jules. This solution allows the output of multiple messages together as a set or a batch and is defined as block order fairness. This solution is one aspect that inspired our work and our notion of fair order. Another aspect that inspired our work comes from important research results of consensus properties. More precisely, we took a closer look at the validity property. In the definition of strong Byzantine consensus, the property of strong validity satisfies that correct processes decide on a value that was proposed by a correct process. This means that processes may decide on a value that was proposed by only one correct process. Fitian Gray introduced the definition of delta differential consensus with the property of delta differential validity. This property satisfies that if a correct process decides a value V, then every other value W that was proposed by some correct process cannot exceed the plurality of the decision value V by more than delta. In particular, for delta equals zero, the decided value must be one of the proposed values that is most common among the correct processes and hence makes the initial plurality of the decision value explicit. Another important result of their work is that in an asynchronous network, delta must be at least 2f, where f represents the number of faulty processes to achieve delta differential consensus. Along with the definition of block order fairness, these results inspired our work towards our notion of a fair order. We call our notion of a fair order differential order fairness. Along with the definition, we further developed a protocol that implements differential order fairness, which is called Quick Order Fair Atomic Broadcast. Using the interface OF Broadcast, a message M can be broadcast to the protocol and OF Deliver will output a set of messages. To count the appearance of a message M before a message M prime in the local input orders of correct processes, we define the function B with inputs M and M prime. Now we want to achieve that if there are more correct processes that OF broadcast message M before M prime than correct processes that OF broadcast M prime before M, the no correct process will OF deliver M prime before M. We can say this is achievable when B M M prime exceeds B M prime M by at least two F. Hence, we define a kappa differentially order fair atomic broadcast that satisfies no duplication 
agreement, total order, and additionally, strong validity and kappa differential order fairness. That guarantees that if Bm m prime is larger than Bm prime m plus 2f plus kappa, then no correct process OF delivers m prime before m. Now, when all properties are defined, we can move to the implementation of the protocol. And this implementation is called quick order fair atomic broadcast. And in the following slides, we will show you an example of how our algorithm is executed. And towards the end of the presentation, we will uh, discuss complexity of the protocol. So first, let's start from defining the primitives that we will use in our algorithm. The first primitive is called Byzantine FIFO Consistent Broadcast Channel, shortly BCCH. And uh, this primitive allows the processes to deliver multiple payloads and ensures a notion of a consistency despite Byzantine senders. Intuitively, the channel ensures that if a message is delivered with some label, then the message itself is the same at all correct processes that deliver this label. The second primitive is called Validated Byzantine Consensus, shortly called VBC, that defines an external validity condition. It requires that the consensus value is legal according to a global, efficiently computable predicate P known to all processes. Note that it is not required that the decision value was proposed by a correct process, but all processes must be able to verify the validity. Our algorithm has two events, OF broadcast and OF deliver. In this example, we have three correct processes, zero faulty processes, and we are in the very first round of the protocol. And security parameter kappa is set to zero. We start from the OF broadcast event, triggered by client that is sending a payload message M to process I. Then process I will use BCCH primitive to broadcast the message to other processes. When a process BCCH delivers the payload message M, it increments the corresponding vector clock entry and appends M to the appropriate list in messages. As soon as sufficiently many new payloads are found in messages, each process signs its vector clock and sends it to all other processes. The received vector clocks are collected in a matrix L. In this example, we received a vector clock from some process ID. This vector clock has values 2, 3, and 2. When n minus f valid vector clocks are recorded, a new validated Byzantine consensus instance is triggered. The process proposes the matrix and the signatures for consensus, and then VBC primitive decides on a common matrix with valid signatures and outputs a matrix L prime. This matrix defines a cut, which is a vector of indices with one index per process, such that index for process I determines an entry in messages array, up to which payload messages are considered for creating a fair order in the round. In this example, we can see that the cat value for process ID is equal to 3. This is calculated by the rule that says that cat ID is the largest S such that more than F elements in column ID in L prime are at least S. It may be that the index points to messages that a process I does not store in their messages array because they have not been BCCH delivered yet. When the process detects such a missing payload, it asks all other processes to send the missing payload directly and in a ver verifiable way, such that every process will store all payloads up to the cut in array messages. Once all processes receive the payload up to the cut, the algorithm starts to build a graph that represents the dependencies among messages that must be respected for a fair order. In the first step, the process creates a vertex for every payload message that appears in a distinct list in messages, and it's not yet OF delivered. In this case, we'll see that 
the other messages will be M1, M2, M3, and M4. In the second step, the algorithm builds a matrix M such that the matrix entry M1, M2 counts how many times M1 appears before M2 in messages array up to the cut. This can be interpreted as a votes counting how many processes want to order M1 before M2. In this example, none of the processes want to deliver M1 before M2. The condition for adding an edge to the graph is given in the upper right corner. If this condition is satisfied, we add an edge from M to M prime. We check this condition for every pair of payload messages. Notice the two messages may be connected by edges in both directions when the difference is small. For example, we see this situation for messages M1 and M2. This means that the difference between the number of processes voting for one or the other order is too small to decide on a fair order. All payload messages with a circular dependencies among them will be OF delivered together as a set. For deriving this information, the algorithm repeatedly detects all strongly connected components in the graph and collapses them into a single vertex. For example, here, all four vertices are merged in one when there exists a path from one vertex to another, which is the case in this example. This technique also handles cases like those derived from the Condorcet, Condorcet paradox. The next step is to check for each message inside the vertex if it appears more or equal than n plus f minus kappa over 2 times inside the cut. In this example, we see that messages m1 and m4 appears 3 times in the cut, message 3 appears 2 times in the cut, and message 2 appears only once in the cut. In the upper left corner, we can see that the condition for the OF delivering a message is that all messages satisfy the condition that they appear in more than two uh, messages logs. Since M2 does not satisfy the condition, we cannot output anything. We have to move to the next round of the protocol. In the new round of the protocol, our cut is extended, so now we have more information about the order of the messages. Now we repeat the same steps. We add the vertices first, then we construct a new matrix M, counting how many times is one message before another. Again, we apply a condition for kappa differential order fairness for adding an edge. We apply condition for every pair of messages and add necessary edges. Now the graph is much simpler without edges in both directions. Now again, we collapse vertices into a single vertex where, where there exists a path from one node to another one and we contract edges. In this case, we can see that we can collapse uh, message one, message two and message three vertices into one. Now, because we have more than one vertex in the graph, we order vertices in a deterministic order and choose first a vertex that has no incoming edges. In this case, this is the vertex M4. Before we OF deliver a message, we need to check if this message satisfies condition given in the upper left corner. Condition says that we need a message to appear at least in two message logs before we deliver it. In this case, message 4 appears in three messages logs. Therefore, we can OF deliver this message. Since the message M4 is OF delivered, we can remove this message from the graph and we put this message in the set of delivered messages. Now we can move to the next node and we apply the same rules as before. Finally, because all of three messages, M1, M2, and M3, satisfy the condition from the upper left corner, we can deliver them as a set, all together. The last thing that we want to discuss in this presentation is the complexity of our protocol. 
The table gives an overview of message complexities of algorithms with different notions for fair payload message ordering. We use two measures, message complexity and communication bit complexity. L is maximum size of the payload messages in bits and lambda is the length of the di digital signature. We compare our quick order fair atomic broadcast with the algorithms Sakitas, Temis and Pompe. For example, Akitas uses N to forward power messages for delivering one payload, which exceeds the cost of quick order fare broadcast, at least by the factor of N square. The similar improvement we see as well for the average communication costs. The more detailed complexity analysis can be found in the full version of the paper. And now I invite you to scan the QR code where you can find the latest version of our paper and much more details about the protocol. In the earlier version, we have found a small problem and a new version fixes this problem and it is found in the conference proceeding. A small note is that presentation already includes some changes to the protocol that makes it secure. Finally, I would like to thank Luca Zanolini for helping and working on fixing this problem. And this brings us to the end of the presentation, and I would like to thank you for listening.